Hello, my name is Johanna Albrecht. I'm one of the authors of the paper, and our paper describes how a 20 session EEG based neurofeedback training program um, that was installed as a pilot project affected the attentional performance of children and adolescents with ADHD. 24 young patients with ADHD participated in our program, and all data were analyzed retrospectively. The participants learned to regulate their slow cortical potentials, abbreviated SCPs, and SCPs in the negative direction are thought to be caused by the depolarization of large cortical assemblies, creating a lower excitation threshold of these cell assemblies. The participants learned to regulate their SCPs in the negative and positive direction um, by moving an object upwards to create negative SCPs or downwards for positive SCPs using individual strategies to create those SCP changes. And we emphasized on negative SCP changes. We also introduced transfer trials at session 7 in which the um, trainees had to create SCP changes in the desired direction without seeing an object on the monitor. The training consisted of 20 sessions with an intensive first phase of training consisted of 10 sessions where patients trained on weekdays during two weeks and a second phase of training in which patients trained twice a week during the following five weeks. The patients and attention problems were then measured at three test points, one before, one after the training and one at a six month follow up. These assessments included um, neuropsychological tests and questionnaire data. In addition to this, the percentage of correct SCP changes was measured for each session. In the neuropsychological tests, we saw reduced reaction times and lesser errors after the training, and the ability to create SCP changes increased during the training for both feedback and transfer conditions. These are first positive but very small effects and preliminary results regarding different parameters of attentional performance in young um, people with ADHD. A smaller number of sessions compared with previous studies was applied in this intensive first trains, phase of training. The limitations of the obtained preliminary data are the rather small sample size, the lack of a control group or a placebo condition, and the open label approach because of the clinical setting as well as the retrospective data analysis.